Kevin Allen Jackson. On behalf of my co-hosts, Isaac Simpson and Maria Perry, I'd like to welcome you to this week's episode of Short on Shorts. Our special guest reviewer this week is actress and TV personality Nina Senekar, and the second film we reviewed was Discipline, directed by Christoph M. Saber. The film isn't publicly available online yet, but you can keep up to date with its progress on its Facebook page. The link is in the description. Enjoy our review. Our next film is Discipline, written and directed by Christoph M. Saber. It is starring Florence Quartanude, Frank Semele, Garance Rohr, and Mehdi Jadi. It is a slice of life story from Lausanne, Switzerland, involving a conflict in a grocery store that melts down into a massive race war conflict with the entire neighborhood fighting each other based on their sort of identity, identity conflicts. And um, it seems to have won a lot of European film festivals. It's screened at TIFF, and I can see why. I think this was maybe top two favorite films that we've reviewed on this show. Just absolutely love this movie. It was Kevin's pick. Just such a cool mix of uh, dialogue and great acting and social commentary. Uh, so Kevin, where did you see this? Why did you give this to us? I saw it at the Palm Springs Short Fest, and to me, it, I mean, I loved the social commentary part of it. I thought that that was interesting. Um, but what really kind of blew me away about this movie was how well it was choreographed, right? To choreograph that, th that many characters that are that distinct in such a small space in such a short amount of time. Um, and there was never a moment, even if I thought, there were moments where I thought the message of the movie was a little bit over the head, just a little bit. But the acting was never right, and 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 it just so it just felt it felt dead on. I could see most of this really happening, and it was flawless. I mean, it was a very very well oiled machine. This whole movie, um, and you really and get also, you, you really get stuck in the moral conflict of this film, which I just want to explain before we break it down because we need to know <laughs> what where the stakes are. So, uh, a small child of Egyptian Swiss descent. Uh, does something bad and she's slapped by her father and then a well-meaning Swiss woman comes over and harasses and denigrates the father for doing that in public. And this leads to a massive argument. And you find yourself immediately embroiled in this conflict and like you feel passionately about, I think, probably one side or another. So you're hooked. Yeah, and I don't think, you know, the thing is, is I don't, at least the way I read it, and it's not a huge distinction, but... I didn't see that she was upset that he did it in public. I saw that she was upset that he did it, period. And it was, that was another one of the things that immediately grabbed me because I think it's a problem today that we're so afraid to discipline our children, you know? I mean, I get it, child abuse is a problem, it's always been a problem, it shouldn't happen, it's a bad thing. But I think we've gone too far, I mean, and we've had this discussion about other similar issues a lot. The, that the world has just gone too far in, 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 the, in the other direction. So they're sort of overcompensating, and that's what this woman was to me. She was like the, she was the model of just going way too far to try to solve a problem. Because you have to discipline a child a little, right? Or else they're never gonna fit in. They're never gonna, you know, they're, ne you know, they're, they're, they're gonna have problems later on in life because they don't, they're not socialized correctly. Um, and I, so anyway. I hated that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, yeah, me too. I, it was so well casted. Oh yeah. It was, it was, it, I mean the whole thing was well, well casted. It was perfect from that point of view. Um, so regardless of what you think of how you should, you know, deal with, ch with a child, she was the one that I oh, think yeah. was the trigger of any kind of, you know, opinion. Just so much air against and yeah. just the look of her was yeah, yeah. so... And it was interesting to see all the, like in such a short amount of time you saw so many different relationships between daughter and, 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 and her dad, between husband and wife, between the, the customer and the, the owner, like so, it was just, yeah, it was good. And between the different levels of mm -hmm. like Middle Eastern and African immigrants to mm -hmm. Switzerland, like they are, yeah. they're saying to each other, I don't understand your Arabic, like then, you, you don't right. talk right and it's yeah. really... And then there was a guy who spoke French but he was obviously Italian because he would sometimes, you know, curse in Italian, whatever. and. Um, yeah, it was just a mix of everything. See, so I, didn't even, I didn't even pick up. That was the brown-haired guy? Was, that was Italian? Yeah. Oh, okay. well, yeah, sometimes he would just switch to Italian. Oh, then yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A yeah. lot of... 
a lot of warning. Uh, Maria, did you feel one way or another about the moral conflict at the center of this? I'm a very, like, I avoid conflict as much as possible. So if this had come down around me, I'd have, like, beelined out of the store. So, I mean, it was a little uncomfortable. But I also was raised by a family where they were afraid to hit us in public because they were afraid something like this would happen. So if we misbehaved, they would be like, all right, drop and give me 20, which is so much more humiliating. Like I would have rather been slapped as a child in the store mm. than doing push-ups in the middle of a store. Yeah. <laughs> which is a real thing I that happened. Like, I agree with you So, on that one. Um, I mean, I, I felt like I didn't have a problem with what the dad did. And I don't have a problem with people who feel like a child is being mistreated calling it out but I feel like she was just so pushy and so way over the top for what it right. was. And then just everything just kind of fell into pieces around it and I was sitting in front of my computer going. <laughs> right. so, but um, that's the thing, the thing about it is that she was pushy, right? And, she, and the actress played, you're right, the actress was perfect. I mean, she played it so well. But part of, I think, why her character was so resonant and is gonna resonate for a lot, for probably everybody who watches this, one way or the other, no matter how you feel about the issue, is that she's a well-meaning person who, this is what we were talking about before the show, she's this really well-meaning person who has become an extremist, right? And people don't realize that you can have good intentions and still be an extremist. And that, to me, is what's so fascinating about this character, is that she's exactly that. She has the best intentions in the world, and yet she still goes too far, right? She's, you know, she's the person who, like, my way is the only way, the way I believe. It's an absolute world, like it's a, it's a you know, no hitting your child, period, ever. No, there's never any reason, it's absolute. She black believes in this black and white world, right? And, um, you know, I don't know. Look, I would, I would be there with that kid eating chocolate and chips. That's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> While the, the adults are like fighting, I would totally use the situation to eat as much as I can. I think she's the smartest one in the whole story. Yeah. But let's not give away too much. I mean, I don't know. Well, I mean, it, I, you know, it's not... I would say watch this film for like the great dialogue, not mm. necessarily for the for the punchline. I mean, there's that great moment where the guy pops up in the, in the like... It's just this tumbling snowball of like right. people of fighting. And I think the point maybe he's making is that when one person judges another person so harshly it leads to a snowball of judgments that's sort of unstoppable oh man I am I'm probably screaming at that woman that's where I yeah yeah screw you lady. yeah I mean what I really liked about this movie is also the diversity of so many different nationalities and accents and looks and and you know me being from a foreign country, I'm like, yay! You know, yeah. give jobs to more people. Than <laughs> country, you know. Well, this was a Swiss movie. Yeah. I mean, he. I think he is Swiss and Egyptian, and he's only 25. So, right. Christoph, keep on doing yeah, it. Yeah, very good this job, was man. Very such good Such a good movie. I mean, I don't know if you could turn that into a feature, but. Um, there was an Argentinian movie recently called Wild Tales uh -huh. that was a little bit similar to this in, in like how modern day anger towards each right. other can just spiral completely out of control. I don't know so if I you, would watch that. I mean, I think you probably could make a feature out of the core idea, but I don't know if you could tonally do it the same way. Mm -hmm. Because it was, there was something about, I mean, am I the only one who thought there was something about that was a little bit funny on purpose? Like he, f it felt like there was this sort of undercurrent of absurdity. To yeah, oh, thing, of right? course, absolutely. And I don't it know if you could ridiculous. sustain that through a feature, but you could still do this sort of core idea of, you know, the different layers of, of, of Arabs, for example, right? And how, you know, the Moroccan guy can't understand, the Egyptian guy can't understand the guy from Algeria, right? And the whole and the you know the social differences about how we raise our kids. Like you could make a whole feature about that. I just don't know if tonally. Well, there was something very uh, um, Marriage of Figaro about it, where you know it starts out with one thing and then it just builds and it builds and then you've just got all of these voices on top of each other, sort of creating this clamor, but it all kind of fits together. And I think there's something to that. Hmm. Whether Marriage it's Marriage of Figaro. Mozart. Is that what is? is that it's, a, it's, opera? A, it's an opera. It's an opera. Yes. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Crack a book, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Marriage of Figaro. Oh, no. <laughs> it's really cool because it starts out with 
yeah. like one person's problems and then other people come in and then it just builds but they're all still doing their own thing but sort of interacting and all the pieces fit together sort of like this short oh uh, okay that's and right. i mean it just i think goes you, on and on you'd probably i mean one of the things that's great about this movie is how it it always feels like it's about to explode because it's so short because it's so contained there's that constant pressure and i think that making it longer you you wouldn't have that tension throughout all the time i don't think that would be hard to maintain for a feature but i still think you could you could definitely i mean i want to see a movie just about those guys who own that store yeah 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 that you those know? cool little anecdotes L last question before we move on do you think that Saber thinks they're the villains. Like, do you think that Saber thinks the woman is the villain? Or do you think that he thinks the angry mob? I, I don't know. I mean, I have to say that my gut tells me that he was fairly even handed about this, right? Because I have to dismiss the fact that my natural reaction was to hate that woman, right? So I can't, I have to assume that's something in me, that it's not necessarily what he did or what he felt. I thought he was pretty fair to everybody, honestly. I thought he, I thought he tried to just present an honest portrayal of these, you know, although there was, like I said, this undercurrent of absurdity, it was still a very honest portrayal of these, you know, these regional differences, you know, ethnic differences. Um, you know, cultural differences. I thought, you know, he just kind of, it was almost, there, there was almost, I guess, a documentary quality in that sense. I don't really, f I felt like he sort of stayed out of the way and he just sort of choreographed the whole thing, but then sort of stayed out of the way and like let it happen and didn't really impose his point of view. I feel like for as developed as all of these characters are in such a short span, he had to be really sympathetic for each character and what he was doing. So I feel like maybe he doesn't pick sides as much and he just let the actors do what they were going to do with it. And which I think a lot of that brilliance goes to the woman playing the, the crazy extremist, mm. nonviolent woman because that's clearly she stuck out in such a way that you wanted to hate her. I, yeah, see, I don't know. Like I, at first I thought maybe it was gonna go the other way. I mean, I, I think it's to, a credit to him that he was able to not beat us over the head with whatever he was trying to say here, you know? Thanks for watching. If you want more information about how Short on Shorts works or how you can submit your film for consideration, just click right here. And if you want to watch more episodes of Short on Shorts, just click right here. See this area right here that I'm pointing to right there? That one? Click right there and you can watch all the episodes that you want. See you next time.